Hello, everyone. Darrell Owens, Bowie Television. We're here on Radio Row, and the day continues to roll right along. It's the mid well midday. We're sitting here at noon, lunchtime, stomach gr uh, grumbling just a little bit, but but they have candy. Yes, but we have candy. <laughs> and but here's the thing: to quench your Super Bowl hunger. With me, I have 49ers beat reporter and host of the 49ers uh, show on Believe uh, Sports Podcast and Network, Miss Tracy Sandler. How are you doing today? I am good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Tracy, uh, they're here. They, they, it, took them a here. Couple, it, it took them a couple of years to get back in the game, uh, to get back, make it back to the big show. And guess what? They have to face an arch rival, I guess, in the Super Bowl realm and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, now, you've been with this team all year, mm -hmm. um, and you've had a chance to, to see this team from beginning uh, to end to where we are right now. Uh, what do you think this team needs to do to get over the hump on Sunday and, and take that next step? Uh, to be in Super Bowl champions for the first time in 30 years? Well, they got to play their brand of football. They're going to have to tighten things up on the defense. They're going to have to figure out a way to defend the run because as, as big of a threat as Patrick Mahomes is, and of course he is the guy, he is perhaps the best quarterback on the planet and maybe will end up being the best to ever do it. They also have a really good running back in Isaiah Pacheco, and the run game has been a huge part of their offense throughout the season. The 49ers had, had struggled to defend the run for several weeks now and if you look back early in the season it's been an issue for a while so that is going to be a big one they can't afford to get down again like they did in their first two playoff games you get down 14 nothing to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs it's you're probably not coming back from that so they're gonna have to start fast on offense but they're really just gonna have to play their game of football it's it's the simple things they're gonna have to execute they can't turn the ball over and big thing for them they cannot have these stupid penalties that keep offenses on the field yeah and so you know the one game that kind of maybe taking things back for the 49ers were when they take on the when they took on the Ravens we cover the Ra Ravens our mm -hmm. amazing Karita Park she covers the Ravens for our team mm -hmm. and that game kind of changed the outlook a lot on Purdy and his MVP the candidacy uh, but from that point on they've been able to kind of chug right along uh, what do you think they took from that game to kind of to bounce back and get to where they are now well, I think one, Brock, and Brock Purdy was pretty honest about this. He said that he, he let a little bit of the outside noise and the distractions affect him, and it affected his play on the field. And so he was pretty open about that, and I think it was a good learning experience for, for him. I think the other thing is people have bad games. And right. Brock Purdy is in a unique position where he's really only played over a full season of football. I mean, he hasn't played that many games. And because he is, and we saw him come out in those first several games and win every game that he finished. So then now he's in his second year. People have bad games. Happens, but because Brock Purdy it was the last pick in the draft and a lot of people nationally don't want to believe that he's <laughs> that real he's and good. legit, <laughs> I think it became a bigger deal than it was. It was a bad game. There is no doubt about it. But it was a bad game. And so there was no doubt in my mind that the next week he wasn't going to have a bad game. And so he struggled a little bit in these first two playoff games, but when it's mattered, He's, he's got it together, and he's, he's brought them back to win. But I think he learned a lot from that game that's probably helping him quite a bit this week. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go a little bit on the front office side of things mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, you know, we all, like I said, we cover Ravens and Commanders. Oh, yeah. And so the Commanders took a huge piece of that 49ers uh, did. front office and Adam Peters. And so um, in your time covering the team, how crucial has Adam Peters been to the to developing this 49ers team and and what we see now in this championship game. Well, you are talking to like the president of the Adam Peters fan club. So <laughs> so there's that, but he's been tremendously crucial. Now, I think as time has gone on, you know, he came in with John Lynch who people had a lot of questions about that. He didn't really have experience in this. Right. I think John Lynch has done an incredible job. Part of what he did an incredible job in was of is also bringing people in who didn't know the thing who did know the things that he didn't know. But mm -hmm. now over the years Obviously, I think John Lynch has really grown. He's become a great GM. They have a lot of really good staff in the front office. But Adam Peters will be missed. He's a huge yeah. part of that front office. He was a huge part of building this team and the past teams. The commanders are very lucky, but he will really be missed in San Francisco. I, I'm excited to see what he does with Washington. I mean, Washington has been craving. Mm -hmm. They have been craving a good football team. And, and your encouraging words about Adam Peters makes me and the rest of the commanders fans feel 100% better uh, as uh, we see how he makes things go here in the next uh, couple of years. Now, let's talk about um, 
you yourself. You have your own uh, network. Tell us about your network. Yes, uh, Fangirl Sports Network. I started it about nine years ago, and we are a digital sports media company, and our content is a little bit more focused on female fans. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, news and analysis is what it is, but we do a lot of what are the athletes doing in the community, what are five fun facts about the athletes, highlighting women in the industry, memes, lifestyle content, kind of some pithy, clever um, segments right. that kind of share more information about sports, but not in a condescending way. So that's kind of what we've been doing at Fangirl Sports. It's been a lot of fun. It's been great. We've had a few different iterations of it, but we've been in business nine years, and now we're really growing. We've had a great Super Bowl week, and it's exciting. And then, like you know, on top of that, I cover the Niners. Check it out. Definitely. <laughs> Go to our Instagram at Fangirl Sports Network. You will absolutely love it. All right, so we got two last things here, and Tracy, it's been an honor to have you uh, oh, come in you. here and give us some of that analysis, especially about the game, and of course, uh, letting the Commanders fans, our Commanders yes. fans know, hey, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Uh, so first, uh, I'll get your Super Bowl prediction. Your Super Bowl prediction. I kind of think I know where it's going to go, but where do you see this game going? Well, I'll tell you, I will just start by saying that my predictions have been a little bit all over the place the last two days. <laughs> so I, I will say yesterday, my prediction was 31-28 Chiefs. Okay. Then as the day went on, I said, I'm going to give you guys, because most of my followers are 49ers fans. Oh, they didn't I'm like gonna, that. I'm going to also <laughs> give you guys a 49ers prediction that should they win, I think they win 20 to 24. Today, I'm 49ers 27-21, but... I think this is a really tough matchup. So and <laughs> I really do. And I just and I just think that you, the 49ers are the more talented team from top right. to bottom. Right. But the Chiefs really excel and execute where it counts. And this is going to sound so simplistic, and I've said it on my podcast, but in its most simplistic form, who runs the ball, who defends the run, and who takes care of the football. And that will be go. it. And that will be go. the keys to the game. But so I'll... Today I'm going 49ers 27-21. All right, so that as from what we're getting from this, Tracy, it's it's rotating as the days get a little bit closer. So we're yes. not 100 percent But right now, 49ers fans, that's where it lies. Now, the Bowie TV Bowl. This is our final thing oh, today. Fun. This is the fun Surprises. one. This is this is where we have a fun question. And I want to make sure that you have a good one here. Hopefully we'll see what happens. Pick one, read it, and answer the question. All right. <laughs> Questions. Favorite foods. Oh, ah. well. Uh, my favorite food is sushi, pizza, mm. and then frosting on the cupcakes. I don't need that cake, but I like my frosting. Frosting on the cupcakes, yeah. yes. Yes. I, I like. You will see cupcakes in my house with, like, <laughs> The top's just missing. <laughs> They've been beheaded. <laughs> and if, oh, poor cupcakes. It's like, what about us? No, no, no. no I, don't I, need just, that. Want I just want the icing. I just want the icing. <laughs> exactly. So those are my favorites. All right. Well, look, Tracy, let everybody know where they can find you. They can find me on Instagram at Tracy Sandler, on Twitter at Tracy FGSN, and, of course, the Tracy Sandler Show on the Believe Podcast Network. All right, not Adam's cousin, but Adam, she would definitely be all a part about, you know, y'all connecting and making things happen. <laughs> I'm Darrell Lawrence, Bowie Television, Tracy Sandler of uh, the Bleed Sports Network. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in with Absolutely. us. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you.